Okay, so as we saw uh, in the first week, we have uh, done some simple exercises like programming our friend, programming the turtle, and then uh, you have also done uh, more than what was taught in the class. Uh, you have done something which is uh, writing uh, some loops as well as some of you have written some scanf statements. We are going to go slow. We are going to uh, make sure that everybody in the class is at the same page. So uh, we are going to cover all of these topics. So as I said, and some of it we have done in the previous lecture already. Okay, so um, as I said, in this week, our goal will be to understand uh, variables, memory, uh, then the input output statements, using them in different examples, the basic operators that we have in C, and then, of course, modifying the control flow of a program, which is something which is very important and which allows programs to have uh, the, the kind of or achieve the kind of things that they do um, to achieve these various tasks. Okay, so. Uh, so uh, what we uh, what we have uh, seen in the last class is there are different data types and uh, there are data types which uh, there are a lot of data types which C allows us to define. The commonly used data types are integer, character, floating point that, that we have given examples for. And uh, the type of, uh, so once you have a data type, you can define a variable of a particular data type. A variable can be thought of as a memory location, uh, is a memory location where, uh, which can be modified. And that memory location is given the name of that variable and uh, the type of the variable that is the data type, which is say int character or uh, float is going to tell us how much memory is allocated to it and how to interpret that bit pattern that is stored in the memory. And that was what uh, was told in the last class. That is you have, uh, if you have it as a character, it means something else. If you have it as an integer, it means something else. So that it depends on how, how, how that is, I mean, what is stored there, how should it be interpreted? It depends on the type of the variable, right? And as we have seen, the commonly used data types are integer, character, float. There are other data types also that we will be introducing as we require. Okay, so this is a program that you have seen. That is, it defines a variable ch called ch, which is of the type character. And it also initializes the variable, which is ch, using this little a, and then uses the printf command that we have seen, which has this format specifier, uh, which is which has this, uh, this format specifier percent c, and then the uh, variable name. So this is how you can print out whatever is present in this uh, character, uh, in this variable named as ch, right? So this is a simple program. I hope you have uh, tried it out. It, there's nothing fancy about it. Yeah. Should we only use uh, single quotes for initializing the variable? Single quotes. Say. Okay. So uh, so when is this used? This is not used for initializing an integer or uh, something. This is you. The single quote is used to initialize a character, right? Yes, so yes. single quotes are used to initialize a character. Uh, when we come to arrays or when so uh, is the question related to integer uh, characters versus integers or is it is it related to something yes. else? Only characters. Uh, when I tried with uh, double quotes, it gave an error. Not error. It didn't print mm -hmm. properly, so uh, should we only use single quotes for character? Yes, we should. We should use only single quotes. We'll come to when are double quotes required. Okay. Double quotes uh, will be used for uh, strings, which is which are rep so there is no string data type in uh, C, but it will be uh, rep it will be. Uh, I mean, ah, okay. we'll use that using a character array, and there you can use double quotes. But uh, if you want to initialize a character, you will be using a single quote. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other question on this simple program? Ma'am, uh, uh, slides for the third class is not available there. It's showing like it's not available in this server. Slides or the video? Slide, slides. Oh, uh, third meaning the class for which was held on Friday. Is that right? 
Ah uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So I I will I will I have made a note of this. So Kaushal, can you also please check this? Uh, Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah ma'am, I'll check it. Sure, sure. So I, I will upload that. Thank you for pointing it out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, as I have mentioned in the previous lecture also, if you have uh, other uh, data types, I mean, that is integer or float, the format specifier will change. That is for integers, you will have percent %d. For floats, you will have percent %f. And for other uh, other data types, you may have other for you will have other format specifiers. So you should know what is the format specifier for a particular data type. And as you get introduced to different other data types, we will introduce the other format specifiers also. So what do we learn from here? That uh, a variable has uh, a variable has a type which is given by the data type, and when you define that variable you are you are going to say what is the type of that variable the way we have said care here uh, we'll show other examples when you say this care ch it tells uh, the compiler that this is uh, this is the type of this variable it is going to all allot a certain amount of uh, storage for it uh, the, the how how much storage we'll see and then it also tells the compiler how, how to interpret that memory, the bit pattern in that memory. And based on the type of the variable, you are going to use an appropriate format specifier. Right? So this is what we learn from here. Uh, this is a small, uh, small thing about the variable naming, right? So there are certain rules about uh, the names that you can give to different variables in C. Uh, you should, of course, select names that are uh, representative and intuitive. That is, if you have something that holds the marks, you better call it marks rather than calling X and Y or something like that. Uh, it, it's good to have representative names, but there are also rules about how you can uh, name variables. So uh, a variable name, like what we had called CH, is should be made up of... Uh, letters, digits, and the only special symbol that you can use is this underscore, right? So uh, it also it should either start with a letter or an underscore. It cannot start with a digit. And these variable names are case sensitive. So uh, so for example, you can, the valid variable names in C are like age, height, even underscore ii is something which is a valid variable name. And while it looks a little weird, it is uh, typically used when you write some programs which in which maybe you don't want these variables to be used by somebody else. This is something that you will find in the standard library used very heavily that um, variable names start with underscores. So, sorry. Yeah. So these the second line shows some allowed but some variable names which are undesirable, for example, A1, B2, I underscore J. And this different, uh, uh, I mean, having the same variable names with the uh, same name, uh, that is this age with a different uh, uh, capitalization means that capital A small g e is one variable, whereas A G E, that is the capital A G E is another variable. And these two are different variables in C. So it is a very bad thing to have this uh, variable naming, which is allowed, but which is undesirable. Right? And then there are certain things which are not allowed by the compiler. For example, if you write one weight or um, care for, which are reserved keywords in C, then you will not be allowed to have variables of this name. Right? So this is something about the variable naming. Uh, it is it is not something that you have to buy hard, but uh, if you make a mistake, the compiler is going to warn you. So you uh, it it will give you an error, not warning. It will give you an error, and therefore you will not be allowed to write variable names which are disallowed in the C language. Okay. Uh, anything that you want to ask here? Ma'am, is class an allowed name here? Sorry. A uh, class. So yeah, I don't think class is a, a keyword in C. 
so class will be a valid variable name you can try it out okay anything else okay Good. So uh, this is something, but more importantly, you have to remember that uh, variable names that you choose should uh, be representative for the readability of the code. Okay, so now uh, we spend a little more time on what we what it means by declaring, initializing, and modifying variables. So as you see, the following statements: int, age, care my character so the first word here int is a keyword which is telling the type of the variable care is again a keyword similarly float is a, uh, is a keyword yeah so is somebody speaking siddharth okay so if you yeah, uh, I request you to hold on to your questions till we take a logical break. Okay, so uh, whereas the age, my care, and F1 are the variable names here. So when we say, when if we have written these statements in our program, it means that memory is allocated for all these three, but it is not initialized, right? How much memory is allocated to the, each of these variables? At the moment, we don't know, but we have said that based on the type of the variable, the memory, the amount of memory differs. And we will see an operator today, which is called the size of operator, which we will use and find out how much memory is allocated to each of these variables. Okay, so when you have defined this memory location, uh, you have uh, allocated yourself space uh, by saying int age. If you want to initialize it, you can do it in the same statement, which is int age is equal to 10. It means that mm, this, uh, uh, this memory location will be initialized by the appropriate bit pattern for 10. And as we have said in the last class, uh, a suitable binary representation is used for representing 10 in this memory location. Uh, another way which is done is you define it in by saying int age. But in the next statement, you say age is equal to 30, and that is also valid. You are initializing it or modifying it um, after uh, you have allocated space for it. Okay, so uh, here is where I want you to uh, observe that this, the, without saying much, we have already used this assignment, which is an operator in C. And uh, this assignment operator is a specific operator which will which will take whatever which will evaluate whatever is on the right hand side of the operator and then assign it to the variable that is sitting on the left hand side of the operator. So as far as we are concerned, when we look at this equation that is age is equal to 30, it looks like uh, if we think of it only as an equation, then we can also say 30 is equal to age. But this is not a valid way to assign something in a C programming language. You have to have uh, on the left hand side a variable and on the right hand side something which, uh, which can be evaluated and then whatever is the value of that is going to be stored in the uh, variable that is on the left, si left hand side of the uh, assignment operator. Okay, so anything up here? Okay, so let's move on. So I I am not sure whether there are any questions in the chat because I am monitoring it. Okay. Okay, so somebody has written that the voice is breaking a lot. So Kaushal, uh, is it uh, is it okay now? Ah yes, ma'am. It has been fine throughout the class. Sorry. It, it has been fine, ma'am. Your voice was it wasn't breaking okay. for me. Okay. Yeah. So in case, yeah. So if it is uh, breaking, please stop me and tell, let me know, right? Okay. Fine. Uh, okay. So coming back to the output uh, statement that we have introduced in the last class, the output statement is uh, uh, is is this function printf, which is uh, which which will allow you to print to the uh, screen. 
and this printf we have used it in the very early i mean the, in the classes last week also where we printed constant strings for example we printed asterisks or we printed the roll numbers of uh, the student and the ta and so on but when we want to print out uh, variables and their values we need to use uh, it appropriately using the format string so the format string tells us uh, as we have mentioned how many variables to expect the type of each variable that is um, using the conversion symbol that is percent %c for character percent %d for integer and so on and then there is additional uh, formatting options that it gives that is uh, the w dot p that was also introduced again that is something that you will use it only when you require to really format using printf but other than that you are just going to say printf percent %d the variable name and uh, that is something that is uh, enough okay so uh, i get equals okay um, so uh, uh, the common mistakes that uh, occur while using the printf statement when you are not used to it is uh, this uh, comma which is missing after the double quotes and more importantly the um, mismatch between the actual number of variables given and the expected number of uh, uh, variables in the format string so for example if you give 3 uh, versus you give 3 uh, uh, in the format string and you give five variables or vice versa right so these are common mistakes that we want to avoid similarly we want to make sure that we match the type of the format uh, specifier versus and the type of the variable for example if the first variable is an integer you must have the first uh, percent having a percent d and so on this will come by practice but uh, you should remember that this is something that printf expects okay anything about the printf statement ma'am i have a doubt yes. ma'am if we give the width let's say like uh, during the in the uh, printf statement like percentage we can put width the point precision also no ma'am like uh, that modifier like we can also put width no ma'am yes you can um, also put width Um, if we put the bit less than the number, like for example, if we have a number, for example, four point eight or something, and if we give the bit as one, then what will happen? Hmm. I think it will still print out the whole thing. It will not. Uh, it will not cut it down. But have you tried it? No, ma'am. No, no, I have to try. Like I just got okay. the idea now, so I have to try it. No, uh, it, it it yeah, you can try it out. It's fa fairly easy. But I would believe that it won't. Uh, cut down the things but if you if you want i mean it is more to you more of to you uh, more it is used more of to uh, format it in a particular way for example you want leading spaces and so on then you are you are going to use this width so you can certainly try it out what happens if you have a number which has four digits but you give one yes ma'am okay yeah again as i said this width and precision are going to be used in special cases for the sake of completeness i have mentioned it here as well as in the previous class but these are some things that you will use it only when you are going to do real formatting in the initial things you are just more interested in the logic of your program and making sure that the variable contains what you want and that is why you are printing it out okay so another uh, important aspect of this printf is which is very interesting is that uh, typical functions that we write or even we think about are uh, functions that take a fixed number of uh, arguments or uh, or parameters however the printf is uh, is able to take multiple or variable number of arguments and this is something that makes it interesting that is it allows you to uh, print many things in uh, the same statement and this is uh, enabled because this printf is something that is taking variable number of arguments so this is something that you would want to uh, make a note or observe about this uh, uh, printf as well as the scanf that i had pointed it out okay uh, ma'am okay so ma yes ma'am in express lecture Uh, you gave a statement, a print of statement, uh, ma'am. Yes, Hello, ma yes. Uh, I give. 
Hello? Yeah, in that, uh, um, in that, the value of width you give 20, ma'am. Okay. And uh, the output which we which we were supposed to print had only seven values, ma'am, seven uh, numbers. So you said uh, the remaining 13 will be uh, like, I don't know, I think spaces, I, I guess. But actual output, yes. how will it look like, ma'am? Oh, how will As, the output look like? So did, again, did you try it out? Uh, no, ma'am, not yet. It will look like past 13 spaces and then the character. Okay. Yeah, so uh, these are very simple programs. You must try it out, and uh, uh, it's good that you're asking questions, but you must try it out. It will have leading spaces and then followed by the uh, actual number that was there, and uh, it will pad it with the appropriate number of spaces in the, in. I mean, uh, there will be leading spaces for that. So please try it out and you will see. That. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, in that program, uh, we got the uh, spaces in the front and then the last digits were rounded off. So, the, the I think the precision must be stating that, right? So, how much was the precision? Ma'am, precision was not mentioned. We yeah. still ended up getting the last digits as different. For instance, I got... Yes. The number was 23.4290, but when, I print, when we printed it, I got 11 spaces. 23.429001. I'm not sure yes, from where. Point. Okay, 001, is it? Yeah, yeah there yeah. seems to be a 01 that is added. Okay, uh, that seems to be strange. We can try. So when we go to our REPL, I mean, this thing, we'll, we'll go and try out that program. Is that okay? And we'll see what is happening. I uh, actually ran it in REPL. Okay, sure. So I, I would like to see what is happening and then I, I'll comment on that. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. So if we add. Uh, okay. So if we add more than the more precision than the decimal places, then it, it holds. Then instead of showing zeros, it shows random integers. Uh, Okay, so this is because the way the floating point numbers must be represented and uh, yeah, so so is it showing completely random things or it, is it like 0, 0, 0 and the last bit is 1 or something? It is so showing random things, but ma'am, it is Sorry? showing random things, but for a particular number, it is showing particular random things. Means for a particular precision, if the precision is 10, it is showing particular number. If, if I increase. Uh, okay. So the question is. Based on the particular precision. Uh, so you are saying that for a particular number, it is showing. Particular random numbers. Particular random uh. numbers. Means random numbers are same all time. Okay. Uh, so for, I mean, so for anything that you try to do and you give higher precision, you are getting the same random bits. Is that what you are saying? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so you, okay. So I, if I understand correctly, you tried changing the value in that same variable. Is that right? And printing it out again and again. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, so again, it depends on. Okay. So you have initialized it only using. Uh, okay. So uh, again, it depends on the precision that you are using. Uh, sorry, the uh, precision of the representation of the number. So. Uh, if it is a float, it has, I think, up to seven, uh, seven, uh, up to seven decimal points of precision. So, did you print more than that? Ma'am, I tried up to twenty-five. After twenty-five, it is showing zero. I think twenty-five or eighteen. After eighteen or twenty-five decimal places, it is showing zero. Okay, so if I understand right, I think the precision for even the double. Uh, 
uh, I mean, the, okay, so there is a, okay, so let me just clarify the questions for everybody. So the questions, questions that uh, I think Rahul is asking or uh, Sonish, right? Uh, okay, so one of you is asking is that uh, yes. what happens if you give, uh, so if you have a number, something like a floating point number, which is, uh, let's say 2.1234, and you ask your printf to print out something like 10, uh, up, 10 values after the decimal, it is because of the floating point uh, errors or uh, the representation in the error uh, the errors in the representation of floating point numbers so the float data type will have certain number of precision after the decimal i think it is about 7 and the double will have 15 so after that you should not expect any i mean you you can get some errors so if it is happening before that uh, we'll have to see but again uh, there will be some error in the uh, representation uh, because of this floating point. So that is why you should be getting these uh, random things if you are printing it to a very high uh, precision value. Does it answer your question? Yes. Ma'am, but in the original question, we have print, we have given five decimal places, ma'am, but it increases randomly to seven, ma'am. Huh. So this, uh, so this, I will, as I said, when we go to REPL, we'll try it out and I'll, I'll, I'll see what I, I would like to see what we are getting and then I'll uh, comment on that. Is that okay? Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So coming back to this. Uh, okay. So uh, coming back to what we were saying, we, we had this uh, particular data, particular data type. We want to uh, know how many bytes are allocated to a particular uh, variable or a, uh, a variable of a particular type. And this can be found out using an operator, which is called the size of operator in, uh, uh, in C, which is provided by the C language. And the size of operator can take two types of things as its argument. I mean, it has only one argument, but it, it you can give either the variable name like I have done here in my care. So the my care is a, a variable of type uh, uh, character and my int is a um, variable which is of type integer. And uh, you can print out the number of bytes that are uh, allocated to this variable using the size of operator. So the size of, uh, for the size of, you can give either the name of the variable uh, here, like I have done in the first two statements, or you can also give the data type that is, for example, in the third statement, I have simply said float instead of defining a variable of type float and then uh, uh, doing it. So uh, you, you can write these statements, all these are correct statements. So if you run this program, you are going to get uh, uh, you are going to get the number of bytes that are allocated to uh, a particular particular variable or a per particular data type. So uh, you should try this out and uh, you should try what happens when you run this program on your machine or uh, your repel.it platform. And you will see that there is a small warning that uh, the uh, program gives when you compile the program. And we'll show you show you in a minute that warning that it gives. So uh, I'm going to now stop sharing this and go to my REPL.IT. Okay, so Kaushal, can you please confirm that you can see my browser now? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, so uh, this is almost the same program. I hope everybody can see the program on the left-hand side, which is uh, the standard C program with a variable int x defined. And then I have said printf percent d slash n size of x. So the variable names are slightly changed. The program is shorter but it uh, illustrates the same point. So if I, uh, so instead of running it directly, let me just compile it gcc main.c and you, I hope you are able to see that it says that uh, this 
the second argument is uh, is something which is uh, it expects uh, the argument of type percent i mean d, uh, per, because i have given percent d it expects an int but argument 2 has type long unsigned int which should be in fact written by um, either ld or lu and therefore if i change this to ld which is, which it also prompts here you are going to get rid of the warning so one thing that i want you to note here is this warning is not very important the program will run correctly even with this warning but a good practice that you must follow is you should uh, you should try to uh, look at these warnings carefully make sure that your program does not have any warnings this will come up when we do the scanf statement again and uh, the scanf can have uh, if you ignore some warnings you can lead into it can lead to some things which are uh, runtime errors as well anyway so this we have uh, we have corrected it and we are going to again compile our program and now this this has been compiled as you know that it will create a, a executable which is a dot out so if i just run a dot out that is execute that it will tell me that the number of bytes that are allocated to this variable x is 4 so this 4 is in bytes or uh, so if you want to know the number of bits it is 4 into 8 that is 32 bits are allocated for this uh, variable x which is of type integer on different machines it is possible to get uh, different by different numbers for certain data types not for integer character and so on but uh, it may be possible that certain data types will have uh, uh, different this thing so you should know what is the uh, number of bytes allocated to a variable uh, on your machine and this it can be found out by the size of operator so any questions here? Okay, so uh, try this program and you will see different number of bytes. Uh, in fact, the character will have uh, one byte. Integers will have, uh, as we have seen, it will have four bytes. Floating uh, point, flo float data type will also have four bytes. Okay, so we have already seen what uh, the error was. So I'm going to now illustrate one small uh, this thing um, using this different data type, which is the short int. So you can say uh, instead of uh, instead of saying int, you can also say a data type which is short int, and the short int uh, may have uh, it. It will have two bytes of uh, memory allocated. We can check it here by changing the program to say short int. Okay, so I hope all of you can see the change. I have changed the variable uh, type, type to be short int instead of int and the memory allocated to it is now two bytes instead of uh, four bytes. And here is where I want to show you a small program and uh, then ask you why does it, what, what do you expect its behavior? So, uh, So are the slides visible, Kaushal, again? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. So as we have seen that this uh, short in data type has two bytes of memory allocated to it. So let's read this program. There are two uh, variables X and Y of type short int. And uh, uh, I, have, I, I have printed also, actually this should be here, it should be LD instead of LU, but I think this will also go through. Uh, but uh, okay, so now this this statement is just for making sure that we have the size of uh, this x or y is two bytes, and then the program is simply printing out the value of x and printing out the value of y. Okay, so I would like you to uh, think about it and uh, what what would be the output of this program. So. Uh, And you can also type out your messages in the chat. 
i will soon uh, enable i will soon try out this uh, poll option of this uh, cisco webex and we will start having these polls in the class so that i can get a sense of all of the class Okay, so is video, I mean, uh, so Kaushal, the video is working for you, right? I mean, there's no problem. No, ma'am. Uh, regarding which one, ma'am? No, no, in general, the view is okay, right? Yeah, yeah, the right? view is fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, so there are some answers. So... Okay, so it will print out, for X it will print out 10, that is what you are saying. For Y it will print out some, uh, there are answers which are 50,000 as well as some other answers also. Uh, okay, so let's go to our REPL.IT and uh, print out this, uh, type out this program and, it, uh, and see what what we get so the answers that uh, some of them are some of the, some of you are giving are that it it will give an error it will print out 50000 it will print out uh, something which is uh, not 50000 uh, yeah okay so one of the things that somebody is pointing out is that ampersand is missing so ampersand is not missing here Ampersand is something that is required when you are using the scanf statement, not the printf statement. So I'd also emphasize on why ampersand is required in the scanf, but uh, this is not the point of uh, this example. Okay, so going back to our REPL.IT, I'm... Uh, Okay, so the program is as follows, int sh short int x is 10, uh, short int y. Hello, yes. So Kaushal, did you say something? Sorry, your voice is uh, breaking. I'm in the second line, you written short in Y. There is if okay, okay, sure, sure. Yeah, it, the compiler will itself script. Thank you. Thank you for pointing it out. I will correct it. Okay, so I think this is more or less the same program. Okay, so let's go second print of statement you have forgotten the comma man. Yes, great. Okay, so good that all of you are watchful. Yeah, so now the program has compiled and uh, I will run it. So if you run it, you you see. I hope you can see that uh, you get two, which is the output of. Uh, the size of which is fine which we know printf x which is also correct which is 10 however the y value that we have initialized it to uh, 50,000 is something that is not printed correctly so why is it not printed correctly so this is because of the the memory that is allocated to uh, this short end it is only allocated two bytes or it is allocated two into eight that is 16 bits of uh, memory and within 16 bits you how much can you store so remember that these integers can themselves be positive or negative therefore one of the bits is already stored already reserved for the sign of the uh, number that is either it's a positive or a negative number so there are 
15 bits that are available to you. So it is 2 to the power 15. So some number which is, uh, I mean, something which is 32,000 and something is going to be allowed in this range, but not more than that. So we have uh, deliberately chosen a number which is greater than the range of this. And uh, therefore, it is a number which is falling outside the range of the uh, memory that is or the uh, maximum and minimum range that can the can be can be accommodated in a short end. And that is why you see something which is uh, which, which is I mean, which is what is interpreted as the bit pattern. So this bit pattern will be I mean, it will try to write down the bit pattern for uh, 50,000. It will. Uh, I think it will make some, uh, it, it will cut out some of the bits and therefore whatever remains is going to be interpreted as whatever it is. And that is something that you are going to print it out. So whatever it prints, it is something uh, that is not a correct value. Yeah, so I, I'll come to how do we find the range in a minute. So what is our important learning from this example that every, uh, variable type is allocated some memory, the, mem the number of bytes that are allocated to it will determine the max and the min range for a particular data type. And when you are programming, if you are dealing with the extreme values, that is la uh, very large or very small numbers, then you should be careful about the uh, careful about the range and make sure that your values do not fall out of the range. Otherwise, you can have uh, erroneous behavior of your program, which seemingly looks correct. So, um, so this is something that is a learning from our uh, example here. Okay, so uh, let me just see the chat messages. Ma'am, I have a doubt. Yes. Can you hear me? I'm like, uh, the yes. sign is stored in a bit now. I'm like, uh, even if that bit is eliminated, how does the sign change? Even if we take out that bit, how does the sign change to become negative? Uh, okay, so wh why do you say that the bit? Uh, so let's okay. So I'm not saying how is the uh, uh, whether that sign bit is one or zero and so on. So uh, let's say if you have one in the place where the sign bit is there, and if the sign bit is one, it means that it is a negative number. Then as soon as you have a one, it is going to interpret it as a negative number. Is that clear? Yes, ma'am. But okay. uh, I'm still not clear how, like, can you repeat what you said? Like, once again, can you repeat? Okay. So let me, okay, let me try this out, whether it can write on my screen and it will become a little helpful. Uh, just give me a moment. Okay, so um, so are you able to see what I'm drawing here? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so let's say this is the memory box that we have. And just for a very simple example, let's say that uh, one, one, sorry, the writing is not, uh, yeah, so one, one, uh, one is there. Uh, and let's say that there are four bits that we have and let's say that this is representing uh, the last bit is representing the sign. If I write it as a zero, it means that it is a positive number. If I represent it, if I write it as a one, then it is a negative number. Is that okay? Just for the sake of example, this is not necessarily how it is going to be stored, but let's say this is how it is. Okay. Is that fine? Okay, so let's say that you you write some number which is having more number of bits than four bits and your number has something like one, 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 zero, zero, right? Let's say these are the things that you have and let's say that it is going to take only the these four bits. Again, I'm making all these assumptions, but let's say it, it stores only these four bits. Then it is storing one, one, zero, zero, whatever I have written in the box. And it has ignored this one, right? Yes, Remember your 
so now whatever you are writing here is is telling or according to its interpretation the first bit is a one therefore it is a negative number and the remaining number is one zero zero which is the bit pattern for four yes ma'am right so you can have the sign of an integer changed because you are running out of range is that clear yes ma'am yes, ma okay okay so uh, yeah so i don't know whether this stays on the slide or how does it work let me let's see how it goes but uh, okay okay so uh, so let me just check if there are more questions on this Yeah. Anybody else has any question? Ma'am, I have one more doubt, ma'am. Like, if you put size of y, what will it print? Will it will it give an error or uh, will it uh, print the short int size? Oh, okay. So the size of y doesn't depend on what you are storing in y. It depends on. So remember that as soon as you have told short int y, you have told the compiler that y is a variable of type short int. And therefore, allocate whatever you will allocate to a short int. And the uh, compiler is going, or in this machine, it is going to allocate two bytes to the short int. Therefore, it will always allocate two bytes. And in these two bytes, you can store whatever you want. But if you exceed the range, then you are going to be in trouble. That is what this example shows. Okay. So it doesn't it doesn't matter like uh, it goes out and out. Okay, it'll only. Yes, it doesn't matter uh, for the for if you print out. Uh, Per, again, percent LU or percent LD size of Y, but it matters for your program because your program is going to have an erroneous behavior. It does matter for that part. Yes, ma'am. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. So somebody had asked me, uh, how is this size of? I mean, how is this range computed? Let me describe it for integers, and then I will also point you out that. The min and max ranges can be found in some file which is called as limits.h, and you can print out uh, these things. But let's do one small example so that you are clear about what uh, what is the range. So, uh, okay, so again, let me try to annotate it here. Uh, Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Uh, yeah, ma'am. I was uh, saying that for that random. Number which we are getting minus fifteen thousand five hundred and thirty six. I think uh, mathematical reason for that because uh, the short the range for a short int in integer in C is minus thirty two thousand seven hundred sixty eight to thirty two thousand seven sixty eight. And when we type fifty thousand seven sixty seven, right? Uh, I got seven sixty eight on the net. On the on the internet. It should be less than that. No, it should be less than that. Uh, yeah, short int. No, no, yeah, the, num the number range. Okay. Yeah, the number range itself. Yeah, okay, go yeah. ahead. And then uh, the the compiler starts reading fifty thousand from zero. Now it reaches till thirty two seven six eight, and after that it cannot. Uh, it runs out of memory. So what it does is it reads till uh, thirty two thousand seven sixty eight. Now thousand it has to cover more seventeen thousand two thirty two. Uh, uh, fifty thousand minus three two seven six eight. So, uh, so now what the compiler does is starts counting from the end, which is negative thirty two thousand seven sixty eight. So negative thirty two thousand seven sixty eight plus seventeen thousand two thirty two gives us minus fifteen thousand five thirty six. Yes. So your uh, your uh, analysis is correct. Um, I I will not go into that analysis at the moment. I will just point out how what is how does one compute the range of uh, the uh, this thing. But you are on the right. Uh -huh. your, your analysis is. I correct. think it is because it stores in two's complement form. Yes. So we have not um, so we have not discussed the exact. So that is what in the last class when I said that it is stored in appropriate binary representation. It is a two's complement representation. So those who are interested, I will point you out to something where you can read how it is exactly stored, and then you can also uh, logically tell what is going to be the output. But uh, this is something that is not 
not something that we will uh, want you to i mean this is not something that our programs will rely on that if you keep 50000 in short int then the actual value that you will have is something which is this and therefore your program should behave like this this is some, not something that we will want our programs to rely on so we will we will make sure that our uh, values do fall in the range of the min and max that is supported by that uh, data type right so you all of you are right that the actual representation does matter but since we have kind of said that there is an underlying representation that we have not gone into i will not go into how this number has come up right but i'll just point out what is the how does one come, one think of this max and min range right so again i'll try to draw this that is there are these uh, this is six two bytes which is which is 16 bits here I mean, I'm just pointing one, 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 but this means that there are these 16 uh, bits that are available for short int, and the one of the bits is kept for the signature. That is not signature, the sign of that uh, uh, number. Therefore, there are 15 um, bits available to you. So, what is the maximum number that you can store within uh, these 15 bits? is roughly 2 to the power 15 so it's roughly 2 to the power 15 uh, minus of i mean uh, 2 to the power 15 to 2 to the power i mean minus of 2 to the power 15 to 2 to the power 15 there is a small uh, thing that you will have to do in terms of the actual range you on the plus side you will have one less but this is roughly the range of short int, right? So this is how you will calculate the range of the values that are possible to be represented given the size of, in terms of bytes, uh, if it is something which is a signed integer. And when, since we have not said that it is unsigned, it is going to have one bit which is uh, going to be used for this sign. If you say unsigned short integer, it is going to be roughly two to the minus two to the power 16, two to the power 16. Again, there will be a small minus one in the positive value, but this is how you compute the range of the values that are stored uh, for a particular data type. So does that answer uh, how do you find the range for at least uh, the integral data types? Ma'am? Yes? Ma'am, um, this will be from minus 2 power 15 to 2 power 15 minus 1, ma'am. Exactly. That is why I said roughly the range is this. I mean, there will be a small change. I also said that. Okay, ma'am. And for answer, uh, short in ma'am, uh, there won't be any negative numbers, right? Exactly. So that, okay, so, so did I say minus 2 to the power 16? I am very sorry. I should say 0 to 2 to the power 16. Yeah. Okay. Again, it is not 0 to 2 to the power 16, but 0 to 2 to the power 16 minus 1, which is sitting here, I mean. Okay, so this is how these ranges uh, uh, are to be calculated. Uh, we still have uh, not, I mean, we have not, uh, okay, so one thing that some of you pointed out is why is this actual number coming out, which is the negative number. Uh, you can compute that by knowing the exact representation of these integers on the computer, which is the two's complement representation, but I'm not going to go into that uh, for the moment. We'll come back to it if we think that it is something that we want to spend time on. Okay. Excuse me, ma'am. So, yes. yes. Um, uh, whenever we print size of, we need to use the format specifier LD, irrespective of uh, whether it's in CAR or... Uh, yes, yes. It has nothing to do with what you're writing uh, inside this. It has to do with... Uh, what is the writ or what is it going to return? The size of is going, going to return you an unsigned long integer and that is why you are writing this percent LU. It, it has nothing to do with the uh, with whatever you are giving inside, with, whether it is a character or whether it is an integer or it's a short int. Yeah, good question. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So having spent time on the size of, which is good, and understanding the ranges, which is again very, very important. We move on. 
uh, yeah, so this is where I want to pause and say what are our learnings. So every variable has a memory allocated based on its type. And the number of bytes allocated to uh, allocated determine the minimum and the maximum for that data type. Uh, for signed values, one bit is reserved for the sign that is either a plus or a minus. And very importantly, underflow or overflow will happen if the number of bytes is insufficient. That is like what we saw in the example. So you should, if if as a programmer you are dealing with. Uh, values which are very large or very small, then you must select appropriate data types or change the units and make sure that your data type or your values uh, fall into the range, right? So you have to make sure that you select units appropriately so that the values that you represent finally fall into the range of the data types that you have. Okay, so uh, very good. So we have uh, we have an understanding of this memory. We have also understand that to some extent we should know what is the representation so that we don't make mistakes. And um, as a programmer, also it is helpful for us to know what is the underlying representation. Okay, so now uh, this is a good time to uh, talk about the scanf statement. Again, I have introduced it in the last class. But uh, there will be some, uh, I, I assume there will be some questions on this. So I want to spend some time on this scanf. The scanf again has, uh, scanf is something which will be used to take inputs from the, uh, okay. Yeah, so I am sorry, I, I, I forgot to share the screen, is it? Uh, so Kaushal, what is, what is being shared right now? Uh, the Apple.it maps. Okay, okay, okay. So sorry, I have moved my. I, I started. Okay. Yes, thank you for whoever pointed it out. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I I just had this slide where which where we recapped our learnings. So there's nothing that you lost. But yeah, so now we move to the scanf statement again. The scanf statement has a format string like the uh, printf statement. But whenever you are writing the variables, if you have n variables, each of them you should have an ampersand. Um, and uh, again, the same things that apply, format, specific, format string tells you how many variables to expect. Uh, the type of each variable, that is if you have a percent uh, D, it expects that the very the first is a percent D, it expects the first variable to be an integer and so on. Uh, the most common mistakes are the ones that we do in the case of uh, printf, that is forgetting the commas, mismatch in the number of parameters. But most importantly, uh, the missing and which causes a lot of headache to programmers in C who, who come from different languages initially and they find this very annoying. But we'll say why this is done and um, uh, this is something that is that you'll have to remember when using the scanf statement. Okay, so I will like to give this uh, view again uh, of uh, the memory. So we, as we have said that this is the variable, it has a cell which is allocated to it. Let's say that this is the variable x, that, that is this memory location is called x. Whenever you want to uh, read a value into this x, you are passing to scanf, not the variable, but the address of this variable, which is what is provided by this ampersand. So when you, uh, when the there is a preceding ampersand to a variable, it means that the address of this variable, that is the address of this memory location, as we have seen that this memory, you can think of this as a blackboard. And if you have divided your cells into some way so that you can address them, then to scanf, you are sending the address of this memory location so that scanf can take this address and fill in the value. Suppose the user fills in, uh, gives in 10, then scanf is going to uh, scanf is going to take this memory location and uh, populate that memory location with 10. That is the representation of 10 uh, that we have seen. So this is what is the meaning of this and and uh, this is how 
scanf works so if you put in 10 then of course 10 is not written as 10 it there will be a binary representation of this but for our understanding i'm just writing it 10 here so any questions or comments on this uh, scanf for the and that you have here okay so how many of you tried this statement and how many of you tried it without the and what happens without the and like during our uh, friday assignment but then it didn't come it just showed an error so error or a warning i don't remember man i think it i think it just didn't uh, execute okay maybe your syntax was incorrect because if you simply miss the and it is unlikely that it is going to give an error anybody else i think even if it does take in the value when we print it we will get some random value because it's not quite putting that inputted value into that box right okay okay did you try it no ma'am okay fine okay it works without an and okay uh, so again Uh, somebody says it works without an and does it work without an and so rishab right rishab does it work without an and did you try it yes ma'am i tried making uh, uh, taking in a string input without an and but it still worked so i i didn't ask whether you tried it for a string you have jumped the gun and you have gone ahead so you have taken the string which is a completely different uh, data type right Okay. so string meaning you have so how did you have a string i mean there is no string data type in c so how did you have a string no uh, i had a character array so that is a completely different ball game huh. so we'll come to that uh. but character arrays it will work and it has something to do with uh, pass by value and pass by reference if you are aware but yes. that is not uh, that 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 doesn't explain why i mean that doesn't say the same thing for an integer variable okay 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 so you haven't tried out an integer variable right which without an no answer. without an answer. in ascii strings are naturally passed by reference and never passed by value like this in c++ yes so, so we will just yeah we'll come to that we'll come to strings uh, uh, and we'll say what how they are passed and how is parameter passing happening in a c programming language right okay so uh, it will give output zero and one warning one warning and output will be zero on printing the value of that particular variable it will okay work. so this is a guess or this is what you have tried out no ma'am i tried okay so it uh, you you did it with an ampersand and then it gave you a zero value is that right no ma'am without ampersand without ampersand i tried without and i tried it will give a zero and with and it will give exact value what i input you got like that okay what was your uh, program what was your uh, os was it a linux or uh, you uh, windows based machine windows okay. i tried it okay. on repelite yes okay so on different platforms you will get different uh, behavior but yes, on a uh, unix Yes, I tried it without the ampersand. It is giving a segmentation uh, fault. Okay, yeah. So that is uh, that is the most uh, I mean common behavior of this when you have uh, when when you forget this ampersand. So let for the for the purposes of illustration of everybody, I will just uh, show it on our repel this thing. So. Uh, yeah i hope you are able to see my repl screen so i'm going to just modify this program that we have to just simply take in an integer uh, x and i'm going to do scanf percent t and deliberately not write the and and we'll also see what the
compiler tell what the compiler tells us okay so this is my program i have deliberately forgotten the uh, uh, and here so let's compile this program using gcc yeah so uh, it does not give me an error at least on unix based systems it won't give any error it will i think gcc on windows will also not give any error it says that per se it expects uh, and in star and people who are familiar with pointers know that it you you need an address of the variable which is also the which is also uh, called a pointer and it, therefore it expects an int star but argument 2 has type int which is correct so this is something that the compiler is warning us you may choose to ignore this warning and let's also run the program and if you do uh, main a dot out you the the program is waiting here and it is customary to actually have a printf statement saying that enter the value of x so that somebody knows what has to be done or enter an integer x and let's say i enter 10 then it is most likely the behavior is going to be segmentation fault core dump the meaning of this is that uh, because you have uh, not given this uh, this address it is the scanf is going to take scanf has actually taken whatever is x and it has tr tried to access some memory location which is some random memory location and for that memory location may or may not be in the uh, range of the memory values that the memory location that the program is allowed to access and if it if a program accesses something which is outside its memory uh, mem memory memory location that it is allowed to access then it is going to give a segmentation fault core dumped on unix based systems on some other systems it may behave in uh, different ways however getting a segmentation fault however however annoying it is it is something which is very good because at least at compile time it is telling you that you are doing invalid memory accesses uh, but on the other hand if the program quietly prints out a zero it means that it it has not read the value correctly but it is uh, it is also not uh, possibly accessed uh, uh, memory location which was outside and the, and it did not do a seg fault or core dump but Uh, but your program behavior is certainly going to be incorrect because it has not read or stored the value that you desired uh, to input to to the variable x so now let's correct this and add this ampersand and compile the program again and again it is waiting for what uh, The value and then the value of x is ten. This is something which is very very basic. That is, you are just taking an integer and printing it out. So there is nothing fancy about it. But if you forget the ampersand, you will have undesirable behavior. If you are lucky, you will get a segmentation fault, which on most Unix systems you will get. But uh, on different systems, you will have uh, different systems. You will have different behavior. so how do we catch it our compiler is very helpfully telling us that we have made a mistake we should be better watchful of the compiler warnings and correct them as uh, as soon as i mean as and when it gives it so that we don't lead in land into these problems okay so any questions here about the scanf or uh, anything i just want to clarify i think the error i did on friday was i didn't uh, enter the uh, i didn't put the uh, percentage d i didn't tell it to take in a decimal okay yes yes okay so that you are not familiar with the scanf uh, format itself so that is understandable yes. but uh, then then as i said it must be an error in the syntax itself right and therefore it did yes. not go okay great okay anything else Uh, excuse me yes and the uh, printf statement was the value of x equal to then followed by a backslash n so it should go to a next line and print uh, 10 no value of x equal to so value of x equal to sorry say 
Yes, ma'am. The uh, printf statement was the value of x equal to. Then you had a uh, percentage d and a backslash in. So shouldn't so shouldn't the ten be printed in the next line? Because no. The so the percentage d itself is. I mean that is the place at which you are going to print the value of the variable. So at that place. So if you print if you write value of x is equal to slash and percent d, then of course yes, it will go on the new line. But since you have written value of x is equal to percent d, so this percent d is the place where this value of x is going to be placed. Is that clear? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, and that is why this slash n is the new line is coming only after that. Yes, ma'am. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, yeah. So again, I think the view is repl dot it. Uh, so you are go, you are seeing on the screen this repl dot it or is that correct? Yes, ma'am. It was repl dot it. Now it's nothing. I think it's present. Okay. 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 Sure. Okay. Fine. Uh, okay. So yeah. So this is about the scanf statement. Why till the time we get used to the scanf statement, we'll commit these mistakes. But as uh, as towards the middle of the course, I'm sure we have used scanf statement multiple number of times so that you you are. Familiar with the uh, the syntax and the semantics of it, and you will not forget the ampersand whenever it is required. And we'll come come to places when it is not required, like some of you have pointed out. Okay, so uh, yeah, so this is what we have already uh, discussed. But I'm just uh, recapping. Every variable is assigned this box in this memory. So this this variable is called my variable. This location has a value, which is the bit pattern present in this uh, memory, uh, this cell. It has an address, which 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 you can think of it if you had divided the board into cells and called every cell with some address, maybe the row and the column number. Similarly, memory will also have uh, addressable locations. This is the and the address is obtained using this ampersand, which is the and of that variable. Uh, variable name and uh, so printf just needs the value to print it. So printf is fine without the ampersand because printf only needs the bit pattern which is present inside. So it doesn't need the address. And we'll uh, when we come to functions and pass by value and pass by reference, we'll see that the diff the crucial difference between uh, when we are uh, why is this and required for the scanf or uh, and not required for the printf. And one thing that I would like you to think about is, is there any other command that needs the address of a variable? You don't have to answer it now. You don't have to answer it uh, in the chat or even by unmuting, but think about it that is there any other command or operator which requires the uh, address of the variable? So think about this. And uh, I think we are already done for the time. Uh, I will, uh, I mean, I'll stop the main me, uh, this thing class and the recording, but I'll stop for uh, students who had some questions about the uh, precision and so on, right? Okay.